Greetings, this is William DeMitt Johnson, and about two months ago I did a response to Roll Through Fate about how to keep the fun in GMing. And then my wife, Animate, said, Why is it so short? Why is it only two and a half minutes on fun? Surely you can talk a lot more about fun and GMing a game than two and a half minutes. And well, now we've got time to do it, so I'll do <laughs> So, keeping fun in GMing, what makes the game fun if you're the GM? Well, you're the one in charge. You're the one who gets all the things. You you have all the pieces. You have all all the moves. You have the world out there, and it's fun. Um, there is for a start world building. People say world building is a lot of fun. I no longer find it a lot of fun. I really prefer a simple concept to some detailed world. After all, if players are being chased by the slobbering tippy tentacle nasties of whatever is in your world, they're not really going to worry about the condition of the peasants or the economic situations or they, they ever worry about anything about the economics more than how do I buy an axe or where can I unload this crap we've just looted, who can we sell this to really, they're, they're probably very strange people and why are you letting them into your house? So yes, um, these days uh, the setting can sort of hang. It doesn't need to be there. I'm very relaxed about it. I'll have you can just have a basic concept. That's enough for a setting. Maybe a map. Maybe a map. You can just show the PC players the map, and then they'll go and they'll point to interesting bits on it, and they'll go, "Oh, we want to go here or here or what's this funny squiggle there? That's a coffee stain." Oh, we want to go investigate it anyway. You do? Okay, well, um, it's um, this. Ah, uh, yes, uh, obviously this, this is where this is where the dark things from beneath the depths are tunneled up and created this black stain creeping across the world, devouring everything, corrupting it as it touches. Dude, it's coffee stain. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, you've just got to let your imagination run wild. Um, and settings and world building and organising things and putting everything in its place... And balancing it all out so that nation A trusts nation B and trades with nation C, Y, C through to Z. And they all have some interlocking thing and they have politics and families. And really, uh, the players don't care. The players will only care when they meet these people or they interact with them or more likely they kill them. And so all that effort is often wasted. So don't do it. That's just too stressful. Do something easier. There's just... When people ask, you know, how do I start a campaign? How oh, do I do this world? And this world is intricate and huge and wonderful and beautiful. Dude, PCs are starting off in the village. <laughs> if it's a fancy game. Or well, starting off in the city. If it's a contemporary game. They're not going to explore. You know, you're playing from getting eaten in the, by the third session. They're not going to get that far. They're never going to know. They don't care who the king's brother's sister's uncle's daughter is. No one does. Well, maybe the brother, sister's uncle does, but apart from that, no, they don't. So, yeah, Star Wars is a wonderful system to go adventuring in. There's the evil empire. Why are they evil? Because it says they are evil in the opening credits next crawl. It says, the evil galactic empire. There you are. They're evil. Why are they evil? It says they're evil. They're also ruled by an evil space wizard and... They have a they have a choky asthmatic bad guy dressed in black armor. They're obviously the bad guys. And by contrast, whoever imposes them is the good guys. And there's another damn tie kicking puppy things on Tuesdays. So yeah, go easy on the world building. Don't relax. You know, if you're running Call of Cthulhu, you don't need to look up prices and indexes and travel times. If the party have to go through scenic Dunsmouth, they get on a train. Next scene, bam, they're in scenic Dunsmouth. Probably getting creepy looks from the creepy lo locals. If they have to go somewhere else, Istanbul, to look in the crypts there, then they catch a boat, they catch a train, they catch a plane, they get to Istanbul, and so on. You don't need to. You don't need to work stress about the world building. On the other hand, do stress about the NPCs. The NPCs the PS party are going to meet. Stress about, not stress about their background, their details. If 
the plotter behind the scenes. You don't need to know their backstory. All you need to know is they are plotting behind the scenes. You might have a vague idea why they're out for revenge. Why they're doing this. Why they're doing this plot. Maybe they just want to rule the world. Everyone wants to rule the world. It's, you know, it's de it for bad guys. I'll get up. What do I do? I get up. I put on my pants. I have my breakfast. What do I do today? Try to take over the world. Yeah, that sounds a good idea. That'll keep me going at least until 10. Then I can watch Netflix. Yeah. Take over the world. So, yeah. You know, but, you know, come up with their mannerisms. Come up with what they're going to do. Come up with their plan. The plan is probably more important than anything else. But, yeah, don't sweat all the extraneous details and the guff and the fluff. Um, the party, the players will take care of that for you. They'll come up with reasons. They'll come up with motivations. They'll ask about bizarre socio-political economic theory. As a GM, you don't have to. You just have to provide them with the scenario. There is... There are deep ones in Innsmouth. Why are there deep ones in Innsmouth? Who cares? <laughs> the party will care. They'll come up with a reason themselves. Or they won't. They'll just murder them. They'll just dynamite devil's reef like it was done in the book. You know, no one really cares why there are rocks in the dungeon, why there are Klingons on City Alpha 4. It's not important, but the players will come up for a reason. They'll explain. And as they do, as they as they go, oh, yes, this is this is why the Klingons are at City Alpha 4, because City Alpha 6 blew up in Wrath of Khan and knocked this planet out of orbit. Which is something weird, but whoever cares. And City Alpha 4 is now available for colonization. It's near the Klingon Empire. That's why they're there. They're colonizing. You go, yeah, yeah. You should go, yeah, yeah. Are you reading my notes? Write it down quickly so, so there are notes there. If you're the sort of person who writes notes. So yeah, don't 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 stress over the little details. Um, next thing, make the game actually fun. Make it make it rewarding. Make the way you make it rewarding is you give parties things to do. There should always be things to do. Lots of things, hundreds of things, things crawling out of the woodwork. When they go somewhere, you don't need, for instance, if they're in a city, they're playing in a city game, describe things. There is a library, there, is, there, are, there are bars, there is, a, there is an amphitheater, there is a forum. You don't need to know where these things are in the city. You don't need a map. Think of how you how you mention a map of, where you, of the city you live in. You know where the library is, you know where the police station is, you, you know where to go to pay your bills, you know where, where the council rooms are. And you can get there. You probably don't even think about driving to these places. You don't think about driving to work. You get in your car, you go to work. So, and in a city game, everything just needs to be a relative distance apart. Um, the excellent TV series Babylon 5. I'm sure fans have mapped out Babylon 5, but in the actual TV series, everything was about 20 minutes away. If they always said we'll be there in twenty minutes, so everything was three minutes away. Probably it's a big, circ big circular hub, and you could go into the middle in ten minutes and then go out somewhere. And so it didn't really matter where uh, the Zuklo was in relation to the council chambers, where it was in relation to the war room, where it was in relation to the battle bridge they had. Everything was twenty minutes away. You could get there in the next scene. It didn't matter. You didn't have to know how to get there because that bit's uninteresting. What is interesting is what can happen in the Zuccolo, what can happen on the battle bridge, what happens in the conference chambers. Certainly what happens in Ivanova's bedroom. <laughs> Everyone seemed to be quite keen on that. And they're all 20 minutes away. So, in a city encounter, have everything a certain amount of time distance from each other. And you either walk there, you catch a cab, you take the train... Um, you get picked up by a giant by the giant troll messenger service who then throws you to the, to to the destination, and somehow you land and whatever. The the big the really you can have, you should have the really big picture. You should have the small stuff, the, the guff in the middle. Either the play, the players will either care enough about it and they make it up themselves, or they won't care about it. So why bother? Why bother even creating it? So, yeah, and give them lots to do. Have lots of have lots of places. If you are going to draw a map, draw interesting things on it. Cities, rivers, mountains, hills are not interesting. They can be interesting. But they're not interesting in and of themselves. 
The Haunted Wood is interesting. The Black Tower is interesting. Um, in my game, I ran in post Roman Britain. There are these real places in England called Black Peak and White Peak. It's in the peaks. It's in the imaginatively named Peaks District. And in my game, there is a necromancer at Black Peak, and a very helpful giant at White Peak, a stone giant, very chalk coloured, limestone coloured, I think. And and those are interesting places to go and look at. But cities aren't interesting in themselves. Stonehenge is interesting. What does a fantasy Stonehenge look like? Um, trying to find out where Excalibur is. That was interesting for the party. Or ruins. They really were interested in ruins. Put ruins. If you're doing any form of map, put ruins on it. Put the Lost City of E. The Fountain of Youth. Put evocative, imaginative places on the map. The players will go there. They'll want to poke them. They'll want to be interested in them. So it's have interesting locations. Have places people want to go. Um, the next bit I would ramble on about is rules. Rules are balls. They really are. They're balls. They're horrible. Uh, I've played a very rules intensive game and... It's got calculations and algebra and math for everything. And it's, you know, take your stats, you multiply that by three, you add your skill, you multiply that by, you add four times your skill, you add, you subtract this modifier, you add this modifier, you add in this other stat here, you divide by four, you alter it, you take the square root of it's a Tuesday, and eventually you just don't care. You can just say, oh, you're a thief, okay. And you're a rank four thief. Oh, well, you can do this thing. Yes, you can find some contacts in the city. Sure. If you really feel they must make a dice roll. Then sure, you can make a dice roll. And if it looks low, then say, yeah, you do the thing. If it looks really, if it looks sort of high, go, well, no, no, not today, or, or this complication happens. And we'll get back to complications in a bit. Or if it's uh, a, a catastrophic failure, then something horrible goes wrong, and suddenly the adventure veers off in a random direction, and some crazy, dangerous thing happens. Um, that's the, the fourth, third, whatever, nth thing, is have a plan. Have a plan for the night. A rough plan. Because no plan's going to save survive contact with the enemy. Or in this case, the players. Have a plan. Have a you have you should have some idea based on what they did the last time you met. If it was last week, then hopefully it's still fresh in your mind. If you try and keep it fresh in your mind, just take some notes. They have a plan on what they're gonna do. If they are you know, it's very you know, if there's they're chasing, chasing after this MacGuffin. Then they're going to go looking for the MacGuffin. How are they going to find them? If they're in a city, then they're probably going to ask people. You should have a good idea of who they're going to ask. If it's some wonky magical item, they're probably going to ask someone who knows about magic. They're going to ask a wizard or a local thaumaturgist or maybe a priest or the local cultists. So you should have a plan of what happens when they go... You know, what would the local what would the local wizard tell them? Is he gonna take time out from whatever he's doing? It's bobbly and busy and it's probably very important for him to talk to these random psycho psychotic murder hobos. Is he gonna say, Yeah, sure, I'll I'll give you some pointers, but could you do this for me as well? I have this thing I want done. I want I want these bits and bobs. The cultists might want some legitimacy or some recognition, they want you to do something. So they want you to kidnap someone, they want you to get a sacrifice for them. So have a plan of what you know, they go if they're going to you know, what would you what would your character do? What would you do? Well I'm looking for I am looking for this. I would check out the local thieves gang. So have a plan for that. And you probably know who's in your who's in who's in who the adventurers are, because you've been hopefully been playing with them for a few weeks. You know that, you know, Bob, he likes direct problem solving with an axe. 
So he will try to solve the problems with an axe. If he has to negotiate with someone, he will negotiate with his axe skill. And Tim, 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 Tim's negotiating. Tim, Tim will... But Tim's not very good at negotiations. Um, Tim, Tim plays these slip characters, but Tim isn't exactly slip himself. But he will sort of fumble for it. But maybe his character has those skills. So maybe you give Tim when he tries to use his... All his little talky skills. You give him a lot of breaks that you wouldn't give Bob. Because, well, Bob could talk the socks off. Talk the socks off and a mega donkey. But he does that for a living. In, when he's at, when he's in the game zone, when he's in the game time, he wants problems solved with axe because he doesn't get to solve problems with axes <laughs> during his day job. And Mary, Mary loves loves to use her abilities because she's got eighty four different spells. And she likes to bring the spells to the equation. You know, you see how would the spells are. You know, she's got all these divination spells. What will the divinations say? What will the runes say? What will the stars say? What visions will they have? So have a plan about what's going to happen. You don't need that great a plan, because, well, it's only going to be three, five hours. And, you know, at some point there's going to be some math-intensive, rule-intensive thing in the middle of that, which bogs them all down, or the players will get confused, and they'll spend half an hour talking about what they have to do. <laughs> because def players definitely do that a lot. And during that time, you can be scribbling down the notes and trying to get ahead, trying to just stay in one. You only have to be one step ahead of the players. And during it's not that hard. So, yeah. You don't have to sweat all the big stuff. Um, other fun things. Yes, have a plan. Have consequences. Have a plan for what happens when the party fails. If, whenever you make a school, whenever you insist on a school check, have a plan what happens if they succeed, but also for when they fail. Because they're going to fail some of the time. However big that time is probably 20% of the time they'll fail because most players will pick things that are their character strength or that but there you are so have a plan for when they fail have a plan for what they what might happen if they critically fail you know they're going to try and negotiate with with the duke to get some extra stuff are you just going to roll it for and get them to grudgingly agree or are you going to make them roll if you're going to make them roll then have a plan for what happens if they fail you know he's just going to say get out out of this place Get out! Don't come back till you've done the thing. And if they critically fail, they get arrested. And then where do you go? What do you do? Now that you've arrested the party, they're in the Duke's dungeons and they're awaiting being tortured. Who lets them out? Because obviously you want them to get let out. Role playing, all shackled, shackled up, shackled up in the dungeon is not a lot of fun. Um, just do that briefly. That the party members blame each other. They blame, love blaming each other, and. They come up with some reason for what, how they're going to get released. Is someone going to let them out? Does someone have sympathy for them? Are, are there some other bunch of people? Uh, does the castle suddenly get attacked and well, they get out in the, in, the, in the ensuing chaos? And now there's something even worse has happened. But yes, have a plan for that. Have a have a plan for what happens when the part when the action goes down the strange alley. I have an idea what's going to happen when the party does something completely out of the blow. Just be ready for it. You only have to be one step ahead of them. So, that is some ideas on keeping the fun. Making the game fun for the GM. The main point, in summary, is have the big picture. Have the small stuff the party going to interact with. And don't really worry about the middle. The, in the middle. That's not important. Stay only one step ahead of the party. You only have to stay one step ahead of the party in, at any time. Um, if you've plotted out the entire action for five, for 50 weeks, the entire year, you've probably done too much work. You should be, hopefully you're getting paid for that. But yeah, just one step ahead of the party is all you, all you really need to have fun. And give them things to do, make, them, make things interesting, and make, make stuff that they would want to do. And always have a plan for when things grow pear shaped. So those have been my mad rumblings on keeping the fun. And hopefully that's been a bit longer for everybody now. See ya.